Listen to a short story, A Jury of Her Peers, by Susan Glassbell, Level B1, Oxford Reading University. Martha Hale stopped at the door and looked around her kitchen hurriedly. She hated to leave things half done, but that day she had other business to attend to. Ten minutes ago, Sheriff Peters had arrived in a carriage to pick up her husband. To Martha's surprise, the sheriff asked her to come along too. My wife is frightened to be the only woman on the crime scene, Peters told her. Could you keep her company? So Martha had to leave her housework and join the group. Apart from Martha's husband and the Peterses, there was also a police officer in the carriage. Mrs. Peters greeted her friend politely, and they struck up a conversation. She kept smiling and laughing unnaturally. Martha didn't feel like talking. They were coming closer to their destination, the Wright's place. She looked at the lonely, unpleasant house, thinking about Mrs. Wright. To Martha, she was Minnie, her old friend. How many times had Martha planned to visit Minnie? Why hadn't she ever visited her ever since her marriage? Only after the horrible thing had happened did she finally bring herself to go to that house. The group entered the house through the kitchen door, and the women stopped by the stove. They weren't brave enough to even look around the place. Mr. Hale, would you please tell us what you saw when you came here yesterday morning? asked Sheriff Peters. Mr. Hale was silent for a while. Martha stood there with her eyes fixed on her husband. Then the man spoke confusedly. I came by to ask whether John Wright was going to pay for the telephone line. You see, I cannot afford it now, unless folks from the neighborhood agree to invest some of their money too. But telephones always annoyed John. He was very mad. Stick to the point, Mr. Hale, requested the sheriff. Yes, said Mr. Hale nervously and went on with the story. I walked into the kitchen to see Mrs. Wright sitting there. He pointed at an old rocking chair by the table. Martha noted that it was ugly and didn't suit Minnie's cheerful character in the slightest. She was kind of odd, Mr. Hale said. What do you mean? asked the sheriff. Well, she seemed confused and frightened, replied the man. And she kept rocking in her chair, holding the edge of her apron tight in her hand. I asked if I could see John, and she laughed, saying that he wasn't home. Then all of a sudden, she changed her mind. She said he was upstairs but couldn't receive me because, because he was dead. Someone had put a rope around his throat and pressed it till he couldn't breathe. I asked her why she didn't wake up while he was being murdered right in front of her. She said she was a heavy sleeper and didn't hear a sound. The police officer put his every word down on the paper. Want to learn English from your favorite movie characters? Try Iwa app. You will learn grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation from movie heroes every day. Check out appiwa.com now. Then he suggested, Why don't we go upstairs to examine the crime scene? Are you sure we won't find anything of interest here in the kitchen, Sheriff Peters? Absolutely replied the sheriff in a convincing voice. There's nothing here apart from kitchen tools. The officer searched the top shelf of the cupboard. There were several jam jars there, some of them broken. Oh, she feared that the jars would break from the cold, Mrs. Peters said. The woman was arrested for murder, but all she could think about was her jam, the officer asked, laughing. He headed toward the sink to wash his hands. The hand towel is so dirty, he complained. This place is disgusting. I guess Mrs. Wright isn't too talented of a housewife. Housewives have plenty of responsibilities, replied Martha coldly. Also, men often don't wash their hands properly. It's obvious that towels get messy. Look at you protecting your dear friend, laughed the man. Not necessarily, protested Martha. We weren't friends. Honestly, I quit coming here years ago. This place can hardly be called cheerful. Well, Mrs. Wright didn't bother herself to bring happiness in here, noted the man. I doubt if Mr. Wright did either, returned Martha. Do you mean that they were enemies? I do not mean anything, she said sharply. Well, I shall talk to you about it later. Meanwhile, I ask you to look around the kitchen. Maybe you will find some valuable clues, concluded the officer and headed upstairs. The man followed him. 
I doubt that women will understand the clue even if they come upon one, said Mr. Hale. When the men were gone, Mrs. Hale started clearing up the mess that the officer had left. I can't stand men in my kitchen, she commented. They are way too curious and never happy. Such is their duty, replied Mrs. Peters calmly. They need to have everything under control. Martha saw a paper bag half full of sugar. She was confused. What had made Minnie leave her work half done? Later, the women went to the front room. The sheriff had asked his wife to collect some of Mrs. Wright's clothes and send them to prison. But in her closet, they only found old, unfashionable clothes that had been fixed many times. Wright wasn't too generous of a husband, cried Martha. He didn't even buy her good clothes. She must have been ashamed to go out in these. That explains why she has been so shy and unsociable. Back in the day, when she was Minnie Foster, she used to dress very fashionably. She was so cheerful. She also wanted me to send her the apron, said Mrs. Peters. That's odd, isn't it? I guess she just wants something that reminds her of her normal life. Do you think she is... guilty? asked Martha carefully. I don't know, replied Mrs. Peters, as if she didn't want to answer the question directly. But the sheriff says that she will have a hard time in court. The judge is very strict. He's not going to treat her gently. It's hard to believe that she didn't wake up. Well, John Wright didn't wake up either, even though he was being murdered, said Martha quietly. Mr. Hale thinks it an odd way of killing someone. After all, they had a gun in their house. They cannot solve this mystery. Yes, it's very strange. My husband says the same, admitted Mrs. Peters. It's kind of unfair that they're turning her house upside down to prove her guilty while she isn't here, commented Martha. The law is the law, said Mrs. Peters thoughtfully. Martha looked at the stove. It seemed old and broken. How could she bake in this oven, thought Martha? Or wear those ugly clothes... Poor Minnie, why haven't I ever paid her a visit in all those years? The sheriff's wife went to the back of the room to hang her coat and then stopped sharply. Look, she was sewing a blanket, she said. Martha came closer to examine the cloth. Do you think she was going to put a layer of wool inside or just knot the pieces together? Martha asked. Just then, they heard the officer's voice. Seriously? Is this what bothers you right now? He laughed. All right, gentlemen, let's head to the yard and clear this case once and for all. They're so annoying, complained Martha when the men were gone. Why do they care so much about what we're doing? They just have plenty of complex things on their mind, said Mrs. Peters, bending over the blanket again. Look, cried Martha in surprise. All the other pieces are so nicely, but this one is a mess. It's as if Minnie felt so lost she'd completely forgotten how to sew. They exchanged frightened looks. Then, with an effort, they took their eyes off each other. Martha took the blanket and started fixing the piece. Mrs. Peters came up to the cupboard in search of a bag for Minnie's clothes. Suddenly, she said, There's a bird cage here. I didn't know she had a bird. Maybe she did, replied Martha and came closer to examine the cage. She must have had a little singing bird. She used to be a great singer herself, you know. Look at the door, said Mrs. Peters. It's been opened by force. It hardly stands in place. I have a bad feeling about it, said Martha. If they want any kind of proof, they should take a better look at this instead of searching the yard. She was silent for a while. I wish I'd come to visit Minnie more frequently, she finally said. I ought to have come at least once. I just hated this lonely, unpleasant place. You know, John Wright was a respected man, but he was also violent. To think, she spent years with him. She looked at the cage again. I think she really loved that bird. In a sense, she was like a tiny bird herself. After a while, Martha suggested, You know what we should do? We should send her the blanket as well. This will entertain her a little. Great idea. I think the men won't mind, said Mrs. Peters, and looked into Minnie's sewing basket. There's a box here. I wonder if this is where she keeps her scissors. Oh, 
she drew back in fear. Martha came closer. Inside, she saw something wrapped in a piece of silk cloth. Is it the bird? asked Mrs. Peters quietly. But its neck, it has been broken. The women exchanged looks of horror. Martha hid the box under the cloth hurriedly as they heard footsteps by the front door. The men entered the kitchen. So, was she going to put a layer of wool inside the blanket or just knot the pieces together? Asked the officer with a laugh. We think she was going to knot it, replied Mrs. Peters quietly. Then the officer noticed the bird cage and asked confusedly, Was there a bird? The cat must have caught it, said Mrs. Peters in a surprisingly calm voice. But it's gone now. They say that cats leave when the housewife is gone. She sank in her chair tiredly, but the officer failed to notice it. Well, let's head upstairs once again, he told the men. There was no sign of breaking in from outdoors. The rope belonged to them. I think it's pretty obvious. When they left, the women sat silently for a long while. Finally, Martha said she cared about that bird. She was going to bury it in the box. Wright couldn't possibly love a singing bird. It made too much noise, so he killed it. You know, Minnie used to sing too, but he couldn't stand that either. He made her fall silent forever. She thought for a while, then went on. Just imagine all those years of silence. Then you get a tiny bird that sings to you and makes your life a little bit more cheerful. But somebody takes it away from you, and everything is perfectly silent again. I know how it feels, said Mrs. Peters. My son died at the age of two. Ever since then, I... She suddenly stopped, and then said in a sharp voice, Anyway, crimes must be punished. I wish I'd visited Minnie more frequently, cried Martha. I knew she needed me. I would understand her. We all experience the same things, that's why I could guess what had happened to her. But who is going to punish me for my crime then? I let her die, for lack of life. She took the only jar of jam that hadn't broken and handed it to the sheriff's wife. Don't tell her that her jam is wasted, she said. Tell her it's all right and give her this jar as proof. They heard voices coming closer from upstairs and fell quiet. It's all perfectly clear, gentlemen. The only thing we cannot define is her motive. The officer walked up to the table and reached for the sewing basket. Do you mean to check the things that Mrs. Peters chose to send to the prison? Asked Martha coldly. She was looking him directly in the eye, and soon he turned away. No, I believe Mrs. Peters doesn't require supervision. After all, she is a sheriff's wife. The men went outside to check the yard again. The carriage was waiting to take them to the prison. Once again, the women were alone for a short while. They only looked each other in the eye for a second. Then Martha pointed to the box where the dead bird lay. It was the only solid proof of Minnie's guilt. Mrs. Peters took the box and tried to put it in her handbag, but it was too big and didn't fit. So Martha put it in the pocket of her coat just as the sheriff and the police officer entered the kitchen. At least we learned that she wasn't going to fill her blanket with wool, said the officer, laughing. What was it again that she was doing, ladies? Martha stood there with her hand upon her pocket and said, She was going to knot it. Don't forget to hit the like button to get more audiobooks for free. And now, listen to another English story.